The Treaty of Tordesillas Portuguese, Tratado de Tordesillas, T Tau, 2 Z, Spanish, Tratado de Tordesillas, Ta Tau e Tosias, signed at Tordesillas on June 7, 1494, and authenticated at Setubal, Portugal, divided the newly discovered lands outside Europe between the Portuguese Empire and the Crown of Castile, along a meridian 370 leagues west of the Cape Verde Islands, off the west coast of Africa. This line of demarcation was about halfway between the Cape Verde Islands already Portuguese and the islands entered by Christopher Columbus on his first voyage claimed for Castile and Leon, named in the treaty as C.I. Pangu and Antilia, Cuba and Hispaniola. The lands to the east would belong to Portugal and the lands to the west to Castile. The treaty was signed by Spain, 2 July 1494, and by Portugal, 5 September 1494. The other side of the world was divided a few decades later by the Treaty of Zaragoza, signed on the 22nd of April 1529, which specified the antimeridian to the line of demarcation specified in the Treaty of Tordesillas. Originals of both treaties are kept at the Archivo General de Indias in Spain and at the Arquivo Nacional da Torre do Tambo in Portugal. This treaty would be observed fairly well by Spain and Portugal, despite considerable ignorance as to the geography of the New World, however, it omitted all of the other European powers. Those countries generally ignored the treaty, particularly those that became Protestant after the Protestant Reformation. The treaty was included by UNESCO in 2007 in its Memory of the World Programme. Signing and enforcement The Treaty of Tordesillas was intended to solve the dispute that had been created following the return of Christopher Columbus and his crew, who had sailed for the Crown of Castile. On his way back to Spain he first reached Lisbon, in Portugal. There he asked for another meeting with King John II to show him the newly discovered lands. After learning of the Castilian-sponsored voyage, the Portuguese king sent a threatening letter to the Catholic monarchs stating that by the Treaty of Alcacovas signed in 1479 and confirmed in 1481 with the papal bull Iderni Regis, that granted all lands south of the Canary Islands to Portugal, all of the lands discovered by Columbus belonged, in fact, to Portugal. Also, the Portuguese king stated that he was already making arrangements for a fleet an armada led by Francisco de Almeida to depart shortly and take possession of the new lands. After reading the letter the Catholic monarchs knew they did not have any military power in the Atlantic to match the Portuguese, so they pursued a diplomatic way out. On 4 May 1493 Pope Alexander VI Rodrigo Borgia, an Aragonese from Valencia by birth, decreed in the bull Inter Ketera that all lands west of a pole-to-pole -pole line 100 leagues west of any of the islands of the Azores or the Cape Verde Islands should belong to Castile, although territory under Catholic rule as of Christmas 1492 would remain untouched. The bull did not mention Portugal or its lands, so Portugal could not claim newly discovered lands even if they were east of the line. Another bull, Dudum Siquidem, entitled Extension of the Apostolic Grant and Donation of the Indies and dated 25 September 1493, gave all mainlands and islands, at one time or even still belonging to India, to Spain, even if east of the line. The Portuguese King John II was not pleased with that arrangement, feeling that it gave him far too little land. It prevented him from possessing India, his near-term goal. By 1493 Portuguese explorers had reached the southern tip of Africa, the Cape of Good Hope. The Portuguese were unlikely to go to war over the islands encountered by Columbus, but the explicit mention of India was a major issue. As the Pope had not made changes, the Portuguese king opened direct negotiations with the Catholic monarchs, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella, to move the line to the west and allow him to claim newly discovered lands east of the line. In the bargain, John accepted Inter Ketera as the starting point of discussion with Ferdinand and Isabella, but had the boundary line moved 270 leagues west, protecting the Portuguese route down the coast of Africa and giving the Portuguese rights to lands that now constitute the eastern quarter of Brazil. As one scholar assessed the results, both sides must have known that so vague a boundary could not be accurately fixed, and each thought that the other was deceived, concluding that it was a diplomatic triumph for Portugal, confirming to the Portuguese not only the true route to India, but most of the South Atlantic." The treaty effectively countered the bulls of Alexander VI but was subsequently sanctioned by Pope Julius II by means of the bull a quae pro bono passus of 24 January 1506. 
Even though the treaty was negotiated without consulting the Pope, a few sources call the resulting line the papal line of demarcation. Very little of the newly divided area had actually been seen by Europeans, as it was only divided via the treaty. Castile gained lands including most of the Americas, which in 1494 had little proven wealth. The easternmost part of current Brazil was granted to Portugal when in 1500 Pedro Álvarez Cabral landed there while he was en route to India. Some historians contend that the Portuguese already knew of the South American bulge that makes up most of Brazil before this time, so his landing in Brazil was not an accident. One scholar points to Cabral's landing on the Brazilian coast 12 degrees farther south than the expected Cape São Roque, such that the likelihood of making such a landfall as a result of freak weather or navigational error was remote, and it is highly probable that Cabral had been instructed to investigate a coast whose existence was not merely suspected, but already known." The line was not strictly enforced—the Spanish did not resist the Portuguese expansion of Brazil across the meridian. However, the Catholic monarchs attempted to stop the Portuguese advance in Asia, by claiming the Meridian Line ran around the world, dividing the whole world in half rather than just the Atlantic. Portugal pushed back, seeking another papal pronouncement that limited the line of demarcation to the Atlantic. This was given by Pope Leo X, who was friendly toward Portugal and its discoveries, in 1514 in the Bull Precesse Devotionais. For a period between 1580 and 1640, the treaty was rendered meaningless, as the Spanish king was also king of Portugal. It was superseded by the 1750 Treaty of Madrid, which granted Portugal control of the lands it occupied in South America. However, the latter treaty was immediately repudiated by the Catholic monarch. The first Treaty of San Ildefonso settled the problem, with Spain acquiring territories east of the Uruguay River and Portugal acquiring territories in the Amazon basin. Emerging Protestant maritime powers, particularly England and the Netherlands, and other third parties such as Roman Catholic France, did not recognize the division of the world between only two Roman Catholic nations brokered by the Pope. Tordesillas Meridian. Topic. The Treaty of Tordesillas only specified the line of demarcation in leagues from the Cape Verde Islands. It did not specify the line in degrees, nor did it identify the specific island or the specific length of its league. Instead, the treaty stated that these matters were to be settled by a joint voyage which never occurred. The number of degrees can be determined via a ratio of marine leagues to degrees applied to the Earth regardless of its assumed size, or via a specific marine league applied to the true size of the Earth, called our sphere, by historian Henry Harris. The earliest Aragonese opinion was provided by Jaime Ferrer in 1495 at the request of the Aragonese king and Castilian queen to those monarchs. He stated that the demarcation line was 18 degrees west of the most central island of the Cape Verde Islands, which is Fogo according to Harris, having a longitude of 24 degrees 25 w of Greenwich, hence Ferrer placed the line at 42 degrees 25 w on his sphere, which was 21.1% larger than our sphere. Ferrer also stated that his league contained 32 Olympic stades, or 6.15264 km according to Harris, thus Ferrer's line was 2,276.5 km west of Fogo at 47 degrees 37 w on our sphere. The earliest surviving Portuguese opinion is on the Cantino planisphere of 1502. Because its demarcation line was midway between Cape St. Roque northeast Cape of South America and the mouth of the Amazon River, its estuary is marked Todo este mar de agua doce. All of this sea is fresh water. And its river is marked Rio Grande. Great River. Harris concluded that the line was at 42 degrees 30 w on our sphere. Harris believed the large estuary just west of the line on the Cantino map was that of the Rio Maranhão. This estuary is now the Baía de São Marcos and the river is now the Miram, whose flow is so weak that its gulf does not contain fresh water. In 1518 another Castilian opinion was provided by Martin Fernández de Enciso. Harris concluded that Enciso placed his line at 47 degrees 24. W on his sphere 7.7% smaller than ours, but at 45 degrees 38. W on our sphere using Enciso's numerical data. 
and CISO also described the coastal features near which the line passed in a very confused manner. Harris concluded from this description that Enciso S line could also be near the mouth of the Amazon between 49 degrees and 50 degrees west. In 1524 the Castilian pilots ships captains Thomas Duran, Sebastian Cabot, son of John Cabot, and Juan Vespucius, nephew of Amerigo Vespucci, gave their opinion to the Badajoz junta, whose failure to resolve the dispute led to the Treaty of Saragossa. They specified that the line was 22 degrees plus nearly 9 miles west of the center of Santo Antão, the westernmost Cape Verde island, which Harris concluded was 47 degrees 17 W on their sphere, 3.1% smaller than ours, and 46 degrees 36 W on our sphere. In 1524, the Portuguese presented a globe to the Badajoz junta on which the line was marked 21 degrees 30 west of Santo Antão 22 degrees 6 36 inches on our sphere topic antimeridian moluccas and treaty of zaragoza topic initially the line of demarcation did not encircle the earth Instead, Spain and Portugal could conquer any new lands they were the first to discover, Spain to the west and Portugal to the east, even if they passed each other on the other side of the globe. But Portugal's discovery of the highly valued Moluccas in 1512 caused Spain to argue in 1518 that the Treaty of Tordesillas divided the earth into two equal hemispheres. After the surviving ships of Magellan S fleet visited the Moluccas in 1521. Spain claimed that those islands were within its western hemisphere. In the early 16th century, the treaty between Spain and Portugal, concluded at Vitoria, February 19, 1524, and called for the Badajoz Junta to meet in 1524, at which the two countries tried to reach an agreement on the anti-meridian but failed. They finally agreed in a treaty signed at Zaragoza that Spain would relinquish its claims to the Moluccas upon the payment of 350,000 ducats approximately equals 100 kilograms of gold by Portugal to Spain. To prevent Spain from encroaching upon Portugal's Moluccas, the anti-meridian was to be 297.5 leagues or 17 degrees to the east of the Moluccas, passing through the islands of Las Velas and Santo Tomé. This distance is slightly smaller than the 300 leagues determined by Magellan as the westward distance from Los Ladrones to the Philippine island of Samar, which is just west of due north of the Moluccas. The Moluccas are a group of islands west of New Guinea. However, unlike the large modern Indonesian archipelago of the Maluku Islands, to 16th century Europeans the Moluccas were a small chain of islands, the only place on earth where cloves grew, just west of the large North Moluccan island of Halmahera called Gililo at the time. Cloves were so prized by Europeans for their medicinal uses that they were worth their weight in gold. 16th and 17th century maps and descriptions indicate that the main islands were Ternate, Tador, Moti, Makian, and Bacan, although the last was often ignored even though it was by far the largest island. The principal island was Ternate at the Chaan's northern end. 0 degrees 47 and, only 11 kilometers 7 miles in diameter on whose southwest coast the Portuguese built a stone fort Forte de São João Baptista de Ternate during 1522–23, which could only be repaired, not modified, according to the Treaty of Saragossa. This north-south chain occupies 2 degrees of latitude bisected by the equator at about 127 degrees 24. E, with Ternate, Tador, Modi, and Makian north of the equator and Bacan south of it. Although the treaty's Santo Tomé Island has not been identified, its Isla de las Velas Islands of the Sails appear in a 1585 Spanish history of China, on the 1594 world map of Petrus Planches, on an anonymous map of the Moluccas in the 1598 London edition of Lynchiton, and on the 1607 world map of Petro Cario, identified as a north-south chain of islands in the northwest Pacific, which were also called the Isla de los Ladrones Islands of the Thieves during that period. Their name was changed by Spain in 1667 to Isla de las Marianas Mariana Islands, which include Guam at their southern end. Guam 
S longitude of 144 degrees 45. E is east of the Moluccas. Longitude of 127 degrees 24. E by 17 degrees 21. Which is remarkably close by 16th century standards to the treaty. S 17 degrees east. This longitude passes through the eastern end of the main North Japanese island of Hokkaido and through the eastern end of New Guinea, which is where Frederick Durand placed the demarcation line. Moriarty and Kiestman placed the demarcation line at 147 degrees east by measuring 16.4 degrees east from the western end of New Guinea or 17 degrees east of 130 degrees east. Despite the treaty, S. Clear statement that the demarcation line passes 17 degrees east of the Moluccas. Some sources place the line just east of the Moluccas. The Treaty of Saragossa did not modify or clarify the line of demarcation in the Treaty of Tordesillas, nor did it validate Spain's claim to equal hemispheres 180 degrees each, so the two lines divided the Earth into unequal hemispheres. Portugal S portion was roughly 191 degrees whereas Spain's portion was roughly 169 degrees. Both portions have a large uncertainty of plus or minus 4 degrees because of the wide variation in the opinions regarding the location of the Tordesillas line. Portugal gained control of all lands and seas west of the Saragossa line, including all of Asia and its neighboring islands so far. Discovered. Leaving Spain most of the Pacific Ocean. Although the Philippines were not named in the treaty, Spain implicitly relinquished any claim to them because they were well west of the line. Nevertheless, by 1542, King Charles V decided to colonize the Philippines, judging that Portugal would not protest because the archipelago had no spices. Although a number of expeditions sent from New Spain arrived in the Philippines, they were unable to establish a settlement because the return route across the Pacific was unknown. King Philip II succeeded in 1565 when he sent Miguel López de Legazpi and Andrés de Urdaneta, establishing the initial Spanish trading post at Cebu and later founding Manila in 1571. Besides Brazil and the Moluccas, Portugal eventually controlled Angola, Mozambique, Portuguese Guinea, and São Tomé and Príncipe, among other territories and bases in Africa. Several bases or territories as Muscat, Ormus, and Bahrain in the Persian Gulf, Goa, Bombay, and Daman and Diu, among other coastal cities in India, Ceylon, and Malacca. Bases in present-day Indonesia as Makassar, Solor, and Ambon, Portuguese Timor, the Antropo base of Macau, and the Antropo enclave of Dejima, Nagasaki in the Far East. Spain, on the other hand, would control vast western regions in the Americas, in areas ranging from the present-day United States to present-day Argentina, an empire that would extend to the Philippines, and bases in Ternate and Formosa 17th century. Topic. Effect on other European powers Topic. The treaty was historically important in dividing Latin America, as well as establishing Spain in the Western Pacific until 1898. However, it quickly became obsolete in North America, and later in Asia and Africa, where it affected colonization. It was ignored by other European nations, and with the decline of Spanish and Portuguese power, the home countries were unable to hold many of their claims, much less expand them into poorly explored areas. Thus, with sufficient backing, it became possible for any European state to colonize open territories, or those weakly held by Lisbon or Madrid. With the fall of Malacca to the Dutch, the VOC Dutch East India Company took control of Portuguese possessions in Indonesia, claiming Western New Guinea and Western Australia, as New Holland. Eastern Australia remained in the Spanish half of the world until claimed for Britain by James Cook in 1770. The attitude towards the treaty that other governments had was expressed in a statement attributed to France's King Francis I, show me Adam's will. <laughs> treaty of Madrid in January 13, 1750, King John V of Portugal and Ferdinand VI of Spain signed the Treaty of Madrid, in which both parts sought to establish the borders between Brazil and Spanish America, admitting that the Treaty of Tordesillas, as it had been envisioned in 1494 had been superseded, and was considered void. Spain was acknowledged sovereignty over the Philippines, while Portugal would get the territory of the Amazon River Basin. 
Portugal would relinquish the colony of Sacramento, on the northern bank of the River Plata in modern-day Uruguay, while getting the territory of the Seven Missions. <laughs> modern claims the Treaty of Tordesillas was invoked by Chile in the 20th century to defend the principle of an Antarctic sector extending along a meridian to the South Pole, as well as the assertion that the treaty made Spanish or Portuguese all undiscovered land south to the Pole. Indonesia took possession of Netherlands New Guinea in 1962, supporting its claim by stating the Empire of Majapahit had included Western New Guinea, and that it was part of the Treaty of Tordesillas. The Treaty of Tordesillas was also invoked by Argentina in the 20th century as part of its claim to the Falkland, Malvinas Islands. See also Catholic Church and the Age of Discovery History of Portugal 1415 List of treaties Notes Topic Topic References Topic Topic Citations Topic Topic Bibliography Topic. Edward G. Bourne, "...the history and determination of the line of demarcation by Pope Alexander VI, between the Spanish and Portuguese fields of discovery and colonization." American Historical Association, Annual Report for 1891, Washington, 1892, Senate Miscellaneous Documents, Washington, Vol. 5, 1891–92, pp. 103–30. James R. Ackerman, The Imperial Map Chicago, University of Chicago Press, 2009 138. Leonard Y. Andaya, The World of Maluku, Eastern Indonesia in the Early Modern Period Honolulu, University of Hawaii Press, 1993, ISBN 0-8248-1490-8. Emma Helen Blair, ed., The Philippine Islands, 1493-1803 Volume 1 of 55 Cleveland, Ohio, 1903-1909, containing complete English translations of both treaties and related documents. Stephen R. Bone, 1494, How a Family Feud in Medieval Spain Divided the World in Half New York, Thomas Dunn Books, 2012. ISBN 978-0-312-61612-0. Charles Korn, The Sense of Eden, A Narrative of the Spice Trade, New York, Kodansha, 1998, ISBN 1-56836-202-1. Cortesau, Armando Antonio Pereira and his Map of Circa 1545. Geographical Review, 29-205-225. doi, 10.2307, 209943. JSTOR 209943. Francis Gardiner Davenport, ed., European Treaties Bearing on the History of the United States and Its Dependencies to 1648, Washington, D.C., Carnegie Institution of Washington, 1917 1967. Translation of the Treaty of Tordesillas by Davenport. Henry Harris, The Diplomatic History of America, its first chapter 1452 1493. 1494, London, Stevens, 1897. Knowlton, Edgar C. 1963. China and the Philippines in El Periquio Sarniento. Hispanic Review, 31 to 336 minus 347. Doi 10.2307/472212. Hayes, Edgar E. 1963. Tatiana. The Treaty of Tordesillas and the re Invention of International Law in the Age of Discovery. Journal of Global Studies, No. 47, 2017. External links Treaty of Tordesillas about. Com. 
Treaty of Tordesillas Portuguese from Archivo General de Indias Treaty of Tordesillas English translation from Blair Broken Link Compact between the Catholic sovereigns and the King of Portugal regarding the demarcation and the division of the Ocean Sea English translation from Blair Broken Link <laughs>